Good evening again, everyone. Welcome back. Continue to please enjoy your dinner. Get, please go back for seconds or a fresh libation. Uh, again, w- once again, like like to welcome you to tonight's uh, fall alumni speaker reception. We're very happy to have you here tonight, as well as our keynote speaker, uh, Bob Long, who, quite frankly, has two resumes. Uh, by day, Bob is Assistant Vice President and Relationship Manager within PNC Bank's Suburban Philadelphia Commercial Banking Group, building relationships with and helping provide finance and meaningful banking solutions to small and mid-sized companies in the greater Philadelphia area. That's the day job. By night and weekends, Bob is a sports play-by-play broadcaster, the voice and founder of Bob Long Sports, broadcasting LaSalle football, basketball, and other key sports. In addition to his work, With the Explorers, he has broadcast games for the Big Ten Network, ESPN Radio, the Division III NCAA Tournament, and he hosts weekly broadcasts on social media in recognition of two of his collegiate alma maters, Penn State University and Villanova University. Those are some good choices in schools, Bob. My alma mater as well. I first met Bob five years ago in Pittsburgh. Uh, Myself, new to LaSalle, I had headed there for an industry conference and tried to use the evening time to connect with alumni in the region. Bob's name popped up uh, from his recent exposure in the Explorer Magazine 30 Under 30 profile, and I found myself immediately intrigued by how he was both a rising professional in the finance world, as well as an already accomplished sports broadcaster. I honestly thought to myself, was it possible that I mixed up two profiles? After dinner, it was clear to me this is, is a special individual in the LaSalle community. Possessing a positive energy and outlook, It's easy to see how Bob was able to accomplish so much each week, distributing his passion for both of his careers, his family, and for LaSalle. It's my pleasure to introduce tonight's speaker, Bob Long, class of 2009. Appreciate it, man. Well, thank you very much to John for a tremendous introduction. I'm so happy to be here this evening. Once again, my name is Bob Long. I'm LaSalle, class of 2009, proudly at that, a proud LaSalle graduate from the class of 2009. As John mentioned, by day, I'm a relationship manager at PNC in our commercial banking group. And yes, by night, I am president and founder of Bob Long Sports. Also very proud of that. Uh, For those unfamiliar, we've been doing game-by-game broadcasts of football and basketball for LaSalle uh, since 2015 and even on a one-off basis back to 2012. And being involved with the school in this way has given me a very unique perspective on LaSalle. I've seen that what I can do and what I do here for the school has a positive effect on the student body and on the general community associated with LaSalle. And for a few examples of that, I've seen increased attendance at a lot of the games, football and basketball. I've seen increased interest and following from alumni and community members. So listen, I've seen a lot of really good LaSalle sports teams over the years. Some that have gone to the state championship in football, deep state runs in basketball, and I have never seen a run like last year's basketball team and the way that this community turned around and supported this team. Eight sellout games, down to the palestra, selling out the palestra, thousands of views every game from people out of town, around the country, and around the world. I've never seen anything like that. And I think what drove that was a few things. It was a really talented basketball team, first and foremost. It was a team that had a really great camaraderie with the rest of the student body. And then I think, yes, we had a little bit of a part of it. And our ability to track, monitor, and display the successes of these kids uh, was an important factor in that run last year. I've seen the way it impacts alumni. I find more people telling me that they've now come to a LaSalle game or two uh, because of the coverage that we've done. And this special relationship with LaSalle has done more for me than I ever can do for LaSalle. I've been able to see firsthand the hard work that the faculty and staff do to maintain and enhance the experience that a LaSalle student has 
while walking these halls for four years. I've seen the great work that the students themselves have done and been more exposed to that than I otherwise would have been. And I've seen the great work that John's office has done to create alumni engagement opportunities and I've seen the fruits of those labor. So I'd love to give a round of applause for John for, and his staff for the great work that they have done. Um, so he talked about meeting me and feeling a certain way. I, I feel exactly the same way about him and the rest of his office, and I'm so happy that, uh, that they think enough of me to, to put me up here today. So tonight, I'd like to talk about dreams, talk about passions, and talk about balance. So what can a 2009 graduate examine through the purview of a speech like this that will resonate with folks with a bevy of life experiences, a lot that, let's call it what it is, I haven't had the opportunity to have at this point. Well, to do so, I'm going to need to pick my spots and be targeted with my speech here tonight. So this may be taboo to say, but I'll say it. Commercial banking, while I love it, is not my activity of choice for Friday evening or a Sunday afternoon. Uh, It's just not. Finance is a passion of mine, and I think it's as close to the best possible role for this time in my life, from a career development, from a networking, from a quality of life perspective. But I like it in the current doses that I receive it. And I would guess that that's the case for a vast majority of the folks that are sitting here tonight, hopefully from the folks that are from the class of 1969 all the way through 2014, or the youngest folks that we have here, are doing something for a living that they enjoy. And if not, then John is sitting right back there, and uh, he can find you a mentor to, to help you go through that process. But hopefully that there's something that you guys are enjoying from a life perspective and from a job perspective. But in reality, there's a lot more to life than work. There is faith, there's family, there are friends, there are passions, there's personal reflection, and there's personal development. And work can be interwoven into all those things. But when you shut the lights off at the office, you go home to somebody or something. And so when I shut the lights off at work, I go to pursue my other passions. First and foremost, my family. I go home to my loving wife, Mara, who I'm so happy is here tonight. I spend time with friends, and I continue to cultivate lifelong relationships. I try to live Jesus in my heart through my faith every single day. And yes, I put a lot of energy into broadcasting sports. I developed a brand, Bob Long Sports, that has allowed me to broadcast into the homes of families around the country and around the world. I go live on air two to four times per week, broadcasting LaSalle football and basketball, Swarthmore basketball, Drexel hockey, and then, yes, Villanova and uh, Penn State football. We have weekly talk shows there. So how do I do all this and do so in a way that I can be proud of the product that I'm outputting at all three levels? Personal life, work, and broadcasting. Well, it's simple. I pick my spots, and I'm targeted in my approach to my life. People say all the time, you have so many activities and hobbies, how do you keep it all straight? Well, the answer is that I actually don't have all that many hobbies. My number one mission in life is to be there for my wife and family, as well as to be true to my Catholic faith. I also need to be the best commercial banker that I can be to develop professionally and provide a living for my family. And then, beyond that, I like to be involved with and broadcast sports. And one minor other vice is that I like to play some golf as well. But that's about it. I've decided that I want to be a really good broadcaster. You know, there's no better feeling for me than to convey a story through a radio broadcast and paint a picture for folks, or to take an image visually and add well-articulated and well-timed commentary to a TV broadcast. And you don't just put on the headset day one and accomplish that. It takes a love and a passion for sport, for learning, and for the craft of broadcasting itself to even begin to become proficient at that. I've picked my spots, 
and I've been targeted with my passions and how I want to spend my time. So to you now, what is your passion? What is the thing that you've always wanted to do or pursue that you haven't done? Or perhaps it's something you tried for a brief period of time, but for some reason the brakes were put on. Why was that the case? Was work too busy, too stressful? Did you not have time to do it? Why didn't you have the time to do it? Okay, now it feels like a time to bring it back and address the elephant in the room. No, I do not have kids yet. But, God willing, my wife and I would like to have kids at some point. And I certainly understand the trials and tribulations that will come with that. Maybe not fully yet, but I know that it's going to rock my world when it comes. But when that time comes, I'm going to figure it out. Will I be broadcasting LaSalle football and basketball along with Swarthmore, along with Drexel Hockey, and do it all at the same time when the kids come around? No, probably not. But I'm going to continue pursuing my passion. I'm going to continue broadcasting something. I may need to cut things out. Not to fear, if it's down to those three, my number one passion is broadcasting with South Sports. So no worries there. But I'm going to figure it out. I'm going to pick my spots. I'm going to continue to be targeted with the highest and best use of my time outside of faith, family, and work. And with that, I'm going to continue with my passion of broadcasting sports. So related to your passion or your dream, how can you pick your spots? How can you be targeted in your approach to pursue a passion outside of work? How can you redirect your time that you may spend in front of the television and use that time to accomplish your goal? Can you utilize your time on your commute or in transit to listen to ebooks, to listen to podcasts that may be related to the dream that you're trying to fulfill? For me, I wake up early on Saturday and Sunday mornings to cut highlights or to refine the content that we put out there. The other thing is, I like to carve out time very early in the morning to make sure I can play golf and then get home to spend time with my wife and my friends and my family. Many times my social life comes in the balance of hanging out with friends and spending time with friends and family through the lens of broadcasting a LaSalle High School game or doing a radio show. So I'm beyond blessed that I have a group of friends that has become a supportive community for me and my passion. And related to scheduling, I highly, highly recommend scheduling time to pursue your passion just the way you would as an, uh, for an appointment for your job or an appointment for the dentist. All of my broadcasts are scheduled at certain times, and if I miss them, I miss them. And that's just the very nature of a role like this. But even if your passion isn't constrained by a particular time commitment, how can you make it so? How can you make it so that you're scheduling a specific block of time that you know that I'm going to spend this time pursuing my passion? I believe that you're much more likely to be successful and consistent if you can create this structure where the rest of the activities and the things that occur in your life will inevitably override that passion. The important thing to remember is that there is value to you pursuing your passion and taking that time for yourself and to fulfill that dream. And by the way, that value goes beyond that of the passion itself. Yes, inherently using your precious time to pursue a passion will take away from other things that add value. We all have privilege to be very successful at this point in our lives. We have a bevy of good options with which to spend our time. So yes, it would take away from some of that. But don't let the feeling of taking time to pursue this passion in lieu of another activity overwhelm you. Don't think that this is selfish and taking away from your time with others. The happiness that manifests when you pursue your passion allows you to give more of yourself in the many situations and interactions of your life and quite 
truly, it adds another dimension to your life. I've had an amazing group of people support me and my passion over the years. Some of them are here today. My wife, Mara, starts and ends with her. She is the rock of my life, the best person that I've ever had the privilege to meet. She came into my life when Bob Wong Sports was already a brand, already a thing. She knew that this is something that I loved. And not only did she say, yes, you should continue that passion, she said, how can I help? Yes, if you go to a LaSalle football game or basketball game, you will occasionally see her behind the camera, scrolling it up and down the field, and she's done a tremendous job with that. She supported me in everything I've done, and I couldn't have done it without her. Alex Krastowski is here as well, sitting right there. He has done many camera roles for us over the years. Gives so willingly of his time, and frankly, I don't feel that I deserve all the time you've given to Bob Wong Sports and the selflessness with which you've done it, and I really appreciate it. Rob Stott and Tyler Kern, they're not here tonight. Joe Winning as well, they're my color analysts for football and basketball. They give willingly of their time. And I cannot thank them enough for that. And then my brother is sitting here as well, Kevin Long. He helps me both from a camera perspective and from a color analyst perspective on our Villanova basketball talk show. So there are a lot of people here today that have supported me over the years. Chris Carabello is another one I have to mention here for LaSalle. I called Chris five years ago and said, I'm moving to Philadelphia. Let's do this thing. And he said, let's do it. And we picked up from square one and started broadcasting LaSalle football, and we have not looked back since. And I go through all those names because, one, they deserve that recognition. I would not be up here speaking if it wasn't for them. But beyond that, it's to show that you need a supportive community around you. And because of that, I try to pay everything forward as much as I possibly can. And that's what I'd ask of all of you as well. Make an effort to create an environment for those in your life that are pursuing their passions. Actively support those passions wherever you can. Go to a charity event that he or she helped to plan. Volunteer at the homeless shelter that he or she volunteers at. Attend an art show when your friend has work displayed there. Give back to your alma mater through service. Come to career day. Come to the leadership luncheon with the senior class. Create supportive communities around these important things that you and your family and your friends are all doing and pay it forward. Pick your spots and be targeted. The opportunities are there. You'll need to look hard for them occasionally, but they are there. And the target is always ahead of you. So make sure that you keep your eyes up to see them. I very much thank you all for the opportunity to speak here today. Thank you very much for braving the weather to get here. I hope you enjoyed it, and hail us out. Thank you so much.